Hi there, my name is Diana from Wisent, and we'll be going over a GMAT question from the official practice test number six. So let's dig in. Is the positive integer x divisible by each integer from two through six? So the first thing we're supposed to do is rephrase the questions, right? So rephrasing it, it's asking us whether x is divisible by two and by three and by four and five and six. So this means, is x divisible by two? Is it divisible by three? Is it divisible by four? And so on. So the best way to do it in these type of questions, the divisibility questions, is to, tr to translate the question into prime numbers. So this means, is it divisible by two is a prime, three is a prime, four, we change it to two squared, and five is a prime, we keep it as is, and six is two times three. So if I want to rephrase this term, I would say, is x divisible by two twos? Right, so x is divisible by two, but it's also divisible by four. So how many twos does it have? How, how many twos do we know for sure it's divisible by or that x has? It's divisible by two twos. It's also divisible by a single three, so I write a three, right? And then it's divisible by five, so I write the five. And when I come to six, six is divisible by two. I mean, six is divisible by six, which means it's gonna be divisible by two and by three. I already have a two that you know represent that x is divisible by two and i already have a three so rephrasing the question the question is really asking us whether x is divisible by two squared and by three and by five right so this is the question is it divisible and by the way this is this sign is I use it to just say it's divisible by these numbers. So this is the question. So let's dig into the first statement, uh, the first statement one. Statement one says that x is equal to 10 times m. So x is equal to 10 times m. And this 10, of course, we write it in terms of prime numbers, it's 2 times 5. But what about m? m is divisible by all the integers from 2 through 5. Right, so again, we t translate this into prime numbers. This is a prime, this is a prime, this is two to the power of two, and this is five is a prime. So which means m is gonna be divisible by two twos because it's divisible by two and by four. So I know for sure it has two twos. And m is divisible by three, which is a prime number. And it's also divisible by five. So if I multiply the 10 with the you know, products of m, I'm gonna get that 10 is divisible by two times these two twos. So I know x must be divisible by three twos, two to the power of three or eight, because this is 10, it has a two here, and this has another, it has two more twos. And it's also divisible by one five here and five, so five times five or five squared. So x is divisible by 5 squared, and I have 1, 3, so x is divisible by 3. So let's see if this is sufficient, if this information is sufficient. Well, this is telling me that x is divisible by 8, which means it's definitely going to be divisible by 4, right? It's divisible by 5 squared, which means it's definitely going to be divisible by this 5, and x is divisible by 3, and so this is also divisible by 3, which means this tells us that statement 1 by itself is sufficient. So let's move on to question number two, statement number two. So it says that 10x is equal to n. Since we are investigating the x, we isolate the x by itself on one side. And this investigate now n by itself. So n, according to statement two, it's divisible by two and by three and by four and by five and by six and seven and eight and nine, right? which means, again, we have to write this in terms of prime numbers. So the multiples of two, we have the two, the four, and the eight. If it's divisible by two, and by four, and by eight, it means it's gonna be divisible by two to the power of three. And then we go to the multiples of three. We have three, three so n is divisible by three, and it's divisible by nine. So I can say n is divisible by nine, or three to the power of two. So this is taken care of. And then I go to the 5, it's a prime, so n is divisible by 5. And 6 is 2 times 3. I already have 1, 2, and 1, 3. And then I move to the 7, it's divisible by 7, right? So now I put this information in this equation here. So x now, I can, be, I can write it as these numbers here, 2 to the 3rd times, times 3 to the power of 2 times 5 times 7 
times some sort of an integer, I write capital I to remind myself that n is a multiple of these numbers, of this number, right? So I'll put I to remind myself n is not equal to this. It's a multiple of the, of this number here, whatever this you know product is. So I divide that by 10, which is 2 times 5, and that is going to change my my factors. So now x is divisible. 2 to the power of 3 divided by 2 is 2 squared. And 3 squared it stays as is, 5 is going to cross out, and then 7 times i. So now x can be represented, or I can say x is divisible by 2 twos, 2 squared, 3 squared, and 7. So is this sufficient to answer the question here? No, it's not. Because it tells me it's, it's divisible by 2 squared, I have that, right? I have th it, this the divisibility by 3 because x has two 3s multiplied together. It has 9 as a factor, and of course it's going to be um, divisible by 3 in this case. But it doesn't tell me anything about 5. So x in this case, it could be divisible by 5. It could be in this integer here, but it doesn't have to be. So that's why statement 2 is not sufficient. And the answer for this question is A. Statement 1 by itself is sufficient to answer the question. Hope you like this video, and good luck. Thank you.